I'll start by saying that, um, so yeah, my name is Gianfranco Polizzi and, and I just started actually working um, at the University of Liverpool. So my presentation today is based on uh, my work at the University of Birmingham, uh, but I, from, you know, just a few days ago, I started working as a research fellow. So again, another postdoc at the University of Liverpool. Um, as I said, my keynote today is based on my previous work in a Jubilee Centre for Character and Virtues, which is affiliated with the School of Education at the University of Birmingham. At the Jubilee Centre, I worked as a research fellow on a project, uh, um, as you mentioned just now, um, is called Cultivating Cyber Wisdom, which is still ongoing. Today, I'd like to talk to talk you through this project and the kind of work that I've conducted in the Centre around the concept of cyber wisdom. I will also discuss how this links with digital citizenship education, and I'll provide you with insights based on findings that we gathered through two surveys that we conducted in the United Kingdom. Um, so just a, a very kind of brief outline uh, of this presentation, I'll start with a few words on, 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 the, on context, particularly in relation to the UK as a country, uh, and I will give you some uh, further details about the project itself. Then I will um, kind of unpack our kind of conceptual and theoretical work around cyber wisdom. So what is it that, that we mean by cyber wisdom? We approach it as a multi-component construct. So what, what, what does that mean and what kind of components are part of cyber wisdom? And then I will go into the empirical uh, part of this presentation, which has to do with the research that we've conducted in the UK uh, by um, administering two um, surveys. Uh, I will discuss the, the research questions behind those surveys, the methods that were used, the key findings that we gathered, and I will then kind of uh, focus on implications of those findings, and therefore I will uh, finish with some concluding uh, remarks. So, Cultivating uh, Cyber Wisdom or Cyber Phrenesis, I mean, the Cyber Phrenesis project uh, is a project conducted in the, by the Jubilee Center that draws on Aristotelian virtue ethics and the concept of Phrenesis, which is often uh, translated and, uh, and understood as practical wisdom. So this project is based on the implementation of uh, a school, in, um, school intervention, and more specifically, uh, the um, and on, kind of on the development, delivery, and evaluation of a cyber wisdom education program in secondary schools in England. So what we did was basically to design resources, teaching materials, and to so to develop this cyber wisdom uh, education program and to uh, roll out an intervention um, uh, across a number of different schools in in England. Our research aim was to evaluate the extent to which the program is effective in uh, promoting different aspects of wisdom among 13, 16 year olds in relation to how they use. Uh, digital technology such as the internet. This project in particular uh, builds on previous work of the Jubilee Center, uh, abbreviated JCCV, Jubilee Center for Character and Virtues, on phrenesis. Um, um, as I said, it builds on previous work. And before, I talk, before talking about some wisdom in more detail, I should probably say a few words about the project and the stage we're at. So we recently gathered both qualitative and quantitative data from all the schools participating in the intervention. And this data is now in the process of being analyzed. What we did was to collect pre and post survey data, both from an intervention group of students who received the program and from a control group of students who did not receive the program. In addition, we conducted semi-structured interviews with few um, teachers who delivered the program. So with this in mind, I should say now that the goal behind the project uh, and the intervention itself was to provide adolescents with an opportunity to develop and to be able to exercise wisdom when using the internet in ways that can enable them to navigate both online opportunities, for example, for learning, socialization, uh, and online risks, uh, for example, in terms of privacy, misinformation, forms of online abuse, such as cyberbullying, cyber and so on and so forth. Um, importantly, in our work, we frame cyber wisdom education as a form of moral 
and character education that overlaps with digital citizenship education. So we look at character education as a form of moral education, if, we, if you will, and character education, we take an Aristotelian kind of a perspective on that, meaning that we basically talk about the development uh, and the cultivation of character virtues, such as compassion, honesty, integrity, commitment to social justice. Uh, and indeed, as you'll understand from this talk, we approach cyber wisdom and wisdom in general as a meta virtue. So wisdom in itself is an intellectual virtue, but it's also a meta virtue. It's the virtue that enables you to kind of uh, know when you need to deploy different virtues depending on context. So. As I was saying, we approach cyber wisdom education as a form of character education that overlaps with digital citizenship education, which is concerned with the teaching of how to use digital technologies responsibly, particularly in the context of interacting with others and participating in society. Now, I should say something before I continue talking about digital citizenship education, which is the fact that oftentimes digital citizenship education is kind of uh, approach from a digital literacy perspective. And that is an important component. That's an important aspect of digital citizenship education. But obviously the kind of work we've done in the center in this presentation looks at digital citizenship education primarily from a cyber wisdom perspective, right? Which is, which is an element that has to do with moral decision making online, which is what arguably has been understudied in literature. We argue that both in terms of research and in relation to practice, more efforts are needed to adopt a virtue ethical lens which is uh, which underpin which is what underpins the concept of cyber wisdom in the context of understanding researching and promoting digital citizenship education so indeed both in the uk and elsewhere schools often teach elements of moral education through digital citizenship education which is generally promoted through different subjects of the school curriculum from computing to citizenship however this comes with with challenges and i would talk about three main challenges the first challenge is that there is no unified or coherent framework really for how to teach digital citizenship, which is still pretty marginal in the school curriculum. I should say in this respect that I've written a book just, just recently with colleagues that is coming out next month in May. Uh, and the book is titled Future Proof, a comprehensive framework for teaching digital citizenship in schools. And it, 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 we, you know, in the book, we unpack what a cyber wisdom kind of approach to um, digital citizenship education kind of looks like. I should add that this can already be, be pre-purchased on the sites of retailers such as Amazon, Amazon. And if you wanna know more, please drop me an email and I'll be very happy to discuss this further. The second challenge um, has to do with the fact that in practice, schools in the UK often teach some elements of moral education in relation to using digital technologies, but they do so primarily in line with the in line with deontological and utilitarian principles. So they rely on encouraging students to follow rules, deontology, and to reflect on the consequences of their online actions, utilitarianism. But a little emphasis, unfortunately, is placed on the importance of possessing, cultivating, and deploying not just character virtues such as compassion, honesty, respect, but ultimately wisdom as a meta virtue that can help students decide which virtues to draw. Um, and act upon online, depending on different contexts, especially when presented with moral dilemmas, which generally are the result of one or more virtues kind of clashing, right? So, and the third challenge that has to do with digital citizenship education is the fact that this is this problem, so this, this gap in terms of like, you know, there is not so much of an emphasis on virtue ethics and the importance of virtues. This is made more, more problematic by the fact that the ontological and utilitarian principles and approaches to moral education are important and they are effective, but only to some extent, but they're not enough. On the one hand, rules, for example, on screen time can be rather abstract and oblivious to the emotional dimensions of users' engagement with digital technologies, as well as their moral motivations. On the other hand, it is challenging to expect children in particular to be able to reflect on the long-term repercussions and consequences of their temporarily distant online action. So obviously the ontology utilitarianism are important in terms of understanding how users should you know, use digital technologies, but they come with limitations. And, and that's precisely why we argue that virtue addicts is, you know, has the potential to fill that gap and it should be a very important aspect of cyber wisdom and digital citizenship education. So this is why in our work, we approach the concept of moral decision making online. That is the decisions that users make to navigate the ethical implications of online opportunities and risks, primarily from the perspective of virtue ethics, but at the same time in ways that intersect 
with deontology and utilitarianism relatedly. Uh, this is why we argue that digital citizenship education needs to overlap in practice with cyber wisdom education. But what does cyber wisdom mean in the first place and how can it be conceptualized? So here I'm gonna go and delve into really the conceptual uh, makeup of, of, the, of cyber wisdom as, as a construct. Um, <clears throat> so cyber wisdom broadly refers to the ability to do the right thing at the right time when using the internet. Now, in our theoretical work, on the one hand, we draw on Aristotelian virtue ethics and the concept of phrenesis to conceptualize cyber wisdom. On the other hand, we build on existing models of wisdom that are grounded in different disciplines to better position the concept of cyber wisdom and argue that it should be understood as a multi-component construct. The models that we take inspiration from include Darnell, Darnell and Christiansen's model of phrenesis, um, Christiansen's works in a Jubilee Center, um, uh, and, and this model, their model is grounded in moral psychology, um, in moral psychology and Aristotelian virtue ethics, but we also draw on two models that stem specifically from moral psychology, which are Ardell's and Grossman's and colleagues' models of wisdom. If you're interested in a theoretical work in relation to cyber wisdom, you can read about this in an article that has just come out which was published in the Journal of Ethics and Information Technology. The article is titled Wisdom in the Digital Age, a Conceptual and Practical Framework for Understanding and Cultivating Cyber Wisdom. Now, what is distinct about our approach to cyber wisdom is that each of its components apply, uh, apply specifically to the digital age. So wh whereas those models are about wisdom in general, we kind of start from the from the fact that you know the digital age has brought up specific opportunities but also specific challenges and 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 there are issues in terms of the affordances of the internet and the political economy of the internet that needs to be accounted when understanding what wisdom should look like in the digital age um in, indeed uh, i should i should um first clarify that our decision to propose a distinct uh, framework for understanding cyber wisdom is rooted in the recognition that uh, our societies are, are increasingly mediated by digital technologies, and the internet offers considerable opportunities like, we, like we've talked about before, for example, for learning, socialization, participation, but also risks, online abuse, cyberbullying, grooming, trolling, as well as issues of financial safety, misinformation, polarization, and so on. These risks are largely amplified by the affordances of the internet. Think, for example, of what its technical features afford in terms of anonymity and connectivity, which make it easier to perpetrate forms of online abuse. In addition, they're also amplified by the political economy of the, of the internet, that is by the ways in which the internet is managed and by the extent to which it is under-regulated. Think of how corporations like Google and Facebook operate, of the extent to which they prioritize economic interests over safety, and of the extent to which uh, what happens online is hardly subjected to forms of meaningful regulation, which obviously leaves users kind of, you know, leaves unfortunately users to kind of with the burden of, you know, having the having a, a, a responsibility, the responsibility of having to navigate, you know, not just opportunities, but also considerable, considerable risks. So it follows that possessing wisdom in the digital age means that users need to be able to navigate the ethical implications of online risks and opportunities that are somehow specific to the digital age and that apply to contexts that may well be different online and offline. It is with this in mind that we argue that cyber wisdom should be understood as a construct that incorporates four dimensions or components. So the first component or dimension is cyber wisdom literacy. We call it cyber wisdom literacy, which relies on cognition. And by cognition, I mean the mental processes involved in gaining knowledge and comprehension, including thinking and problem solving, right? This component is about understanding the nature of different virtues, not just in general. So understanding what compassion means, understanding you know, what integrity means, but also in terms of how this applies specifically to um, online context and in ways that can enable users to maximize online opportunities while minimizing online risks. This means in practice that cyber wisdom literacy involves an understanding of how multiple virtues can be acted upon in ways that preserve a balance between taking advantage of online opportunities while avoiding or coping with online risks. 
Having cyber wisdom literacy includes, for example, appreciating the importance of using social media to access information and interact with others, while also understanding the value of producing and disseminating information in line with principles of honesty or in ways that are underpinned by compassion towards those who receive, for example, negative comments on social media. Cyber wisdom reasoning is the second component of cyber wisdom. And this component, which is also grounded in cognition, refers to the ability to choose the right course of action online, especially when we're confronted with moral dilemmas. This might include, for example, whether to prioritize compassion or honesty when one's opinions on social media can hurt the feelings of other users. Or, you know, another example of like, uh, a moral dilemma would be, for example, whether you would, um, for example, be loyal to your friend who's done something nasty or said something nasty to somebody else online, or you would report your friend in the name of honesty. And so there's a clash of virtues, honesty and loyalty in this particular context. And, and, and you as a user, you don't really know what to do. And you got to make a choice, right? That's where cyber wisdom reasoning kind of comes in. And cyber wisdom reasoning is grounded in the recognition that more dilemmas online may be exacerbated by both the technical features and the political economy of the internet. Examples of such dilemmas may include, for example, accessing information free of charge versus observing copyright laws, um, whether to show respect or even compassion for users who show abusive traits on platforms like Facebook, or whether or not to use social media um, to show compassion to others, as opposed to engaging in face-to-face in -face interactions. What is specific about this component is that users need to factor in whether, and if so how, experiencing moral dilemmas online may involve scenarios that are specific to using the internet as opposed to experiencing moral dilemmas offline. The third component, we call it cyber wisdom self-reflection, and this is probably the most distinct component of cyber wisdom, since unlike the other models that we draw upon, it lies more explicitly at the intersection of metacognition and affect. So met, by metacognition, I mean, I mean the mental processes that we use to evaluate our own cognitive processes. This component consists of the ability to navigate, first of all, our own perspective and those of others, and then also our emotions and those of others. So it's really about navigating perspectives and emotions. Um, these, are two as these two aspects are particularly important when it comes to using the internet, since both its affordances, for example, in terms of connectivity or anonymity, and its political economy, so how you know, social media platforms operate, for example, amplify online risks in ways that are fueled by different emotions, right? These include, for example, sentiments of hatred and division towards others in different communities, which, for example, underpin the problem of polarization of public debate online, right? But also different forms of online abuse. So there is, there is, you know, so when we think of online risks such as online abuse, cyberbullying and polarization at play, there is, you know, there is, there is there a clash of different emotions of different perspectives. And it is really hard for a user online to kind of navigate this. And that's why we, we, we argue that cyber wisdom self-reflection is essential for, for these purposes. Concerned with the digital age, this component implies that users need to be able to reflect on their own biases and to regulate their own emotions when dealing with moral dilemmas. For example, when managing feeling, feelings of empathy or anger in the context of interacting with users who show abusive traits. But at the same time, they also need to be able to navigate the emotions of others within online settings in which their own biases might clash with the perspectives of others within context of public debate online, for example, affected by polarization, fu fueled by feelings of hatred. And then finally, the fourth component of cyber wisdom is what we call cyber wisdom motivation. This component, which has to do with moral identity, refers to a desire to act on virtues online in line with principles of the common good. In practice, this means constructing and deploying expectations of how oneself and other users should deploy different virtues to use digital technologies and interact with one another within online context. So in practice, possessing cyber wisdom motivation means to construct and mobilize expectations, imaginaries of how oneself and other users should deploy different virtues when using, when using digital technologies and interacting with one another. This means that users' moral aspirations could include, for example, expecting users to interact online in honest and compassionate ways, as well as expecting online communities to engage in public debate in ways that are mindful of their own different concerns, but also in ways that are underpinned by a certain degree of civility. Finally, users' moral aspirations could also include 
expecting internet corporations and social media platforms to make more efforts to tackle online risks in line with virtuous principles of transparency and accountability. Now, now that I've discussed how I framed the concept of cyber wisdom, I'd like to share a few insights into key findings that we gathered from two surveys prior to rolling out the cyber wisdom intervention that is currently ongoing. Indeed, with a view to setting the scene for the intervention, what we did in 2021 was to design and administer two surveys in the UK. One with adolescents aged 13, 16, and one with parents of adolescents aged 13, 17. While the intervention focuses on adolescents, what we did was to gather richer data by also exploring what parents think and do in relation to their children's internet use. Let's start with the research questions behind the surveys. The question behind their survey with adolescents was, to what extent and in what ways do adolescents aged 13, 16 in England make moral decisions and value virtues and wisdom when interacting with others on social media? And when it comes to our, uh, our survey with parents, the question we wanted to answer was, to what extent and in what ways do parents in the UK value virtues and wisdom in relation to and in the context of how they mediate their children's internet use? In terms of sampling, just to say that we you know we use the convenience and purpose in sampling strategy and managed to collect 1,147 valid responses from eight schools across England. As for a second survey, we commissioned Yonder, a polling company, to administer the survey. They used a nationally representative sample, uh, collecting a total of 1,515 valid responses. In terms of measures, the measures that we, that we used, so we designed the survey to include social demographic questions in order to collect data about age, gender, time spent on social media. Then participants were presented with a hypothetical scenario coming across an abusive post on social media. They were asked to choose what their reaction would be out of eight possible options, three of which can be framed as morally disengaged reactions, such as forward the post to others in schools or do nothing. And then the rest can be framed as morally engaged reactions, ranging, for example, from tell my parents, teachers about it, or send a nice message to the person insulted to check how they feel. Participants were then asked questions to explore the reasons behind the reactions. If they chose a morally engaged reaction, they were presented with nine possible reasons, which we classified as deontological, for example, because of my parents' rules, utilitarian, because I might be punished if I don't, or virtue-based, because it is the kind, thoughtful thing to do. Then uh, adolescents were asked what virtues they most want their friends to show on social media and what qualities they think their friends lack the most on social media. They were presented with eight virtues classified in line with the framework of the Jubilee Center as intellectual, moral, civic and performance virtues. So while I mentioned earlier that wisdom is not just an intellectual virtue but it's a meta virtue, for the sake of the pur for, for the pur for purposes of this of the survey, um, we basically approached wisdom as an intellectual virtue. And then, um, right, and then I should say that besides having wisdom in the survey as an intellectual virtue, we also had different types of virtues, right, like including moral virtues, for example, being honest when they post on social media, or civic virtues, supporting good causes in their posts on social media, or performance virtues, being confident about what they do and post on social media, whereas wisdom, I mean, the, the item in the survey read making good and wise decisions when they post something on social media. This is what they were presented with. And finally, participants were asked how they learned how to use social media wisely. And, 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 and they were given options, including, for example, my parents, my friends, my teachers. Uh, as for the second survey, in terms of the, uh, the survey with parents, we asked social demographic questions, age, gender, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, and so on and so forth. And then we, they were, participants were also asked what kind of mediation strategies they pursue the most in terms of regulating their children's internet use. Possible responses were worded in ways that matched different moral theories behind their strategy. So the ontology, so for example, parents could choose, I make rules about my children, about what my children can or cannot do online. Or utilitarianism, I encourage my children to think about the possible consequence, consequences of what they do online or virtue ethics. I encourage my children to interact with others in ways that are respectful and compassionate, for example, right? Then similarly to our survey with adolescents, parents were also asked what 
qualities or virtues, they prioritize in relation to their children's internet use. So they were presented with eight options. Again, each option captured a specific virtue. And again, the virtues were classified as intellectual, for example, making wise decisions when using the internet, moral, being honest with other uses, civic, supporting good causes in the uh, um, supporting good causes when using social media, and then performance, like before, we're being confident about what they do online. Then finally, participants were asked two questions about their children's formal education in school to explore how satisfied they are 